Thierry on Twitter wrote that everyone who touches Zelensky resigns, which is interesting. After failing the UK at every opportunity to serve globalist interests, Boris Johnson resigns as prime minister, to which the Russian Kremlin expressed good riddance. Italian prime minister Mario Draghi, who helped deliver Italian weapons to Ukraine and rallied support for Ukraine's entry into the EU, announced his resignation. Last month, Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kallas expelled the populist center-left center party, claiming that she needed to form a new government to support Ukraine in their war against Russia. And on Thursday, Kallas officially resigned as a formality to form a new government, which she has already reached a consensus between the center-right Reform Party, the Social Democrats, and the conservative Fatherland Party to form a new three-party government to support Ukraine. And Sri Lanka's president, Godabaya Rajapaksa, who supports Ukraine despite sanctions crippling his own nation, emailed in his resignation after fleeing the country. Beyond resignations and beyond meet and greets with Ukraine's puppet president Zelensky, we have also just seen the assassination of popular anti-globalist leader Shinzo Abe, and the dramatic loss of confidence expressed by the people towards Macron, Trudeau, and Biden. What is happening here? On Celia Farber's The Truth Barrier, Catherine Austin Fitz explains that we are seeing a clean-out or political castration of leaders. Draghi, Johnson, Biden, Macron, Abe, their political capital is exhausted and or they will not push the next wave aggressively. Mr. Global is looking to bring in a whole new round of fresh, meaner leadership. The next wave is total collapse. And it's not easy to find people willing to be the fall guy for the destruction of a nation. It takes a special type of person which might explain why California Governor Gavin Newsom visited the White House right after Joe Biden was shuffled off to Israel to mumble about the Holocaust. Biden is even unsettling to the stupid, and this entire operation requires stupidity. So things are going to keep getting stranger, but it probably won't last much longer because the global financial reset is now imminent. Sri Lanka was just the beginning, and it looks like South Africa could be next, followed by everyone. The fiat fractional reserve banking scheme has been robbing the people blind for decades, but eventually all the money runs out, and the financial pundits are all saying it's this year. The dollar has just reached parity with the euro, and fudging the numbers will no longer work. They have only one solution left, and that's war. War has often been used to save failing fiat currencies, and having no other options, the psychotic bureaucrats in charge will go to war with Russia, which will only hasten the financial collapse of the West. If it comes to World War III, then it will be the final death blow, making way for a new system, which means that unless you're holding on to real money, you will soon be broke because all that paper in our wallets and numbers on our screens is going to soon be worthless. The mass formation psychosis is strong over the United States. This is the liberal world order foisted upon us by our self-serving occupier in chief globalist tool and new world order zealot, Joe Biden. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. And as the Constitution ignoring occupier continues to split the country by feeding it into the clutches of Marxism. At a time of record inflation and as new polling this week shows that 85% of the U.S. public thinks the country is going in the wrong direction. How do you explain this to those people who feel the country is going in the wrong direction, including some of the leaders you've been meeting with this week who think that when you put all of this together, it amounts to an America that is going backward. 
they do not think that. You haven't found one person, one world leader to say America is going backwards. As bad as the tyranny was in 1776, in many ways, as I say, it's worse now in 2022 mm. because the far left, unfortunately, has taken control over the five major megaphones of our nation, meaning the media, entertainment, academia, and of late science and medicine. And people don't realize what they have. They bitch about it. And then nowadays, I am so upset that the things we did and the things we fought for and the boys that died for it, it's all gone down the drain. Our country's gone to hell in a handbasket. We haven't got the country we had when I was raised. Not at all. Nobody will have the fun I had. Nobody will have the opportunity I had. This is just not the same. And that's not what our boys, that's not what they died for. The walls are closing in on the remaining 932 days of Biden's occupation with an approval rating of 39% as a Harvard Caps Harris poll survey found that 71% of respondents do not think Biden should run for a second term. And as inflation reaches a record 40-year high, stock markets posted the worst first half of a year in over five decades, while the failing social security system is set to rise in 2023 by 11% due to the cost of living. Meanwhile, Biden mumbles about carving out the filibuster in order to codify Roe versus Wade into law. Congress is going to have to act to codify the row into federal law. As, as I said yesterday, the filibuster should not stand in the way of us being able to do that. But right now, we don't have the votes in the Senate to change the filibuster on, on at, the, at the moment. But the occupier in chief faces a midterm pummeling, making it impossible for his dictatorship to continue to thrive. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. I mean careful attention to building and sustaining the liberal international world order with the United States and Europe at its core. What Harry Truman famously had on his desk a plaque that said the buck stops here. Joe Biden seems to have replaced that plaque with instead the phrase the buck stops with Putin. 